we saw in our last video that a moment is the turning effect of a force and that we find it with the equation moment equals force times distance. In this video, we're going to look at how this concept applies to both levers and gears. Now, there are loads of different types of levers. And even if you don't know how to describe it in physics terms, you've probably used the principle loads of times without even realizing. What all of these items have in common is that they transmit the turning effect of a force. So we apply an input force at one point, and this creates an output force somewhere else. In all of these cases, there are two important things to notice. One is that if the input and output forces are on different sides of the pivot, like in the case of our scissors, then they'll act in different directions, so one up and one down. Whereas if they're both on the same side of the pivot, like in our wheelbarrow, they will both act in the same direction. So in this case, they're both acting up. The other thing to notice is that the output force is generally closer to the pivot than the input force. And this means that it will be a larger force. This is basically the whole point of levers. We're able to get a large output force with a relatively small input force. To see how this works in practice, let's imagine that we wanted to lift this big rock that had a mass of 200 kilos. Because weight is mass times gravitational field strength, the rock would have a weight of 1,960 newtons downwards. And so for us to lift it directly, we'd have to apply an upwards force greater than 1,960 newtons, which is way more than most people could lift. However, if we placed something solid next to it to act as a pivot, and then we wedged a plank between the two of them, we'd have created a lever. If the distance between the pivot and the rock was 0.4 meters, then by using our equation, we can work out the moment of the rock's weight, which would be 1,960 times 0.4, so 784 newton meters and this would be an anti-clockwise moment around our central pivot. This means that all we have to do to lift the rock is generate a clockwise moment that's greater than 784 newton meters. However, if we knew they were only strong enough to produce a 400 newton force, then we'd have to do a calculation to find out how far from the pivot we had to apply that force in order to create the required moment. So to find that distance, we need to rearrange our equation to get moment divided by force. This gives us 784 divided by 400, which is 1.96 meters. So as long as we push on the lever further than 1.96 meters from the pivot, we'll be able to lift our rock, even though we're only applying a relatively small force. The next thing we need to look at are gears, which are also found in all sorts of things and have the role of transmitting turning effects. Although it's nowhere near this simple in real life, let's imagine that the gear system of a car involves two gears, which we'll call gear A and gear B. Gear A is connected to the engine, which provides it with a turning force so that it rotates. Meanwhile, gear B is connected to the wheels. So if gear B rotates, then the wheels will rotate as well. Because the two gears are interlocking, any rotation of gear A will cause gear B to rotate as well. So effectively, the gear system allows the turning effect of the engine to be transmitted to the wheels because the engine rotates gear A, which in turn rotates gear B, which in turn makes the wheels rotate. Now, there are two important things to notice about this. One is that the gears turn in opposite directions. So here we can see that gear A is rotating anti-clockwise, 
the gear B is rotating clockwise. The other is that the gears are different sizes, or to be more precise, the radius of gear B is two times larger than that of gear A. And importantly, this will mean that the turning effect of gear B is also two times bigger than the turning effect of gear A. So the turning effect of the engine has been doubled as it's passed to the wheels. Something else to notice is that gear A has to rotate two times for each rotation of gear B. So even though the turning effect is being magnified twofold, the total work done remains the same, because gear A is rotating two times as often as gear B. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.